Jing, Statement, Star. Said you wanna be a legend. Legend, Statement, Star, 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 Star. Said you wanna be a legend. You wanna be a star? No, we're legendary. legendary. I'm so uh, all I really wanna be is an icon or a statement. No, it's legendary. Uh, I'm so uh, all I really wanna be is an icon or a statement. No, it's legendary. Uh. Hey guys, it's your girl Patience, and we're here at another episode at Homemade Runway Models: The Experience. High class, prestigious, you know, nice ticket sales. <laughs> But you just gotta stay focused. I'm here to do a job because in like high fashion New York, they not clapping and doing all that necessarily at a show. Sometimes them things is quiet. They get that one monotone music and they ain't playing, you know, something that we like. We we be in the back, you know, jamming to. They playing like high fashion, 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 and then they like, you know, and you're walking. <laughs> about it if I'm gonna say anything I love couture clothing but when you have a long gown especially me being a petite model which means I'm under five six y'all can guess my height because I'm not telling y'all but um we have to do over over extend you know I'm short and I'm thick so I have to make it look like without making it look like too much we got kids here so I can't but you know do so much with my curves but I did a lot, anyways. So when I wore, for the first time, a couture dress designed by Rowan Couture for Chrissy, I was, you know, giving them. And I probably spun like this for about five hours. But you probably won't go see it for another two to three years, so I had to give it to you like that. And that's just tea. Now, what the hell? I'm trying to do some slap, okay? That's what she did to me. Oh, 
They drove in the car separately, and I swear to God on everything, I would have went with them, but they was heading back down to, I think, Georgia or something like that, so they going, I mean, they going through my way, you know what I'm saying, but they not finna make no extra stop for me or whatever like that. So, that's kind of like a worry situation because we have to travel so far, so like nobody's being there, nobody's mom, but we are going to be caring, at least I am, I can only speak for the queen. So, I'm gonna kinda wanna know like what's going on. But then, I also know this, this is life. You know what I'm saying? This is a show that I asked somebody last minute, you know. <clears throat> I don't know. My bank account, they say no coins came to it. So, at the end of the day, people have things to do. I am ready to go. Get me the fuck home. Five, four, three, two. 
The time just revolves around them. So like they can tell they do whatever they want to do. But if you're a man, you trying to like, after you finish doing one thing, you ready to do something else and then something else and something else. So like I'm ready to go, I'm bored. Like I'm up here and it's covered as fuck, there's nothing to do, I don't have my own car, I'm bored. I'm ready to go. You want to record a spin? Yeah, oh, ready? No, I'm not ready. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, so there was one designer that he had some really pretty pieces and he's very particular. He had favorites for models, so I asked him, Can I work for him? He said, I can work for him. I was like, Okay. That was fine by me because he just missed his opportunity. This is Rue 2, everyone, here at the Ames Fashion Show, presented by Sabri, and my name is India. <laughs> I think his name is Rue 2. I liked his designs. Now, people were saying, like, well, he was asking young kids to wear those, and then he didn't want to wear them with, uh, I seen one girl was like, all right, put, another undersh uh, put an undershirt on, he was like, no. <laughs> so one thing about being a model, that a lot of people really don't understand is that you, when you feel like naturally calm and collective and you're secure with yourself, like you don't have any insecurities about yourself, like you feel like you look good no matter how you look, but you can always enhance your look. You can always enhance your look to look like anything as far as going out to being a model. So you can look like one person on the street, look like a whole different person on the runway. And that's how you sell, that's how you make your coin. The only thing I say is if you know a show is geared towards, and that's what I didn't understand when people were saying, well, why would the young girls be walking in the show if he knew? The show was to raise money for preview to Ames. It was for a, a charitable show. You're gonna do whatever you think is gonna raise money. So if a housewife is at that show and she see a bomb dress that her prestigious husband or whatever they gotta go to a gay look and she looking for a dress and a younger girl that's slender, you know, younger, because we are influenced by people who are young, people who look like they got their stuff together, people who look like they hip, they got good fashion sense, they got good clean hygiene, you know, you're gonna wanna you wanna buy that dress, cause if I tell you, if I'm 30 something years old and I tell a lady like, hey, that looks good, you know, and she might say, all right. But if a young girl comes in there, she's 18, teeny bopper, oh, girl, you wearing that dress, it's going to give her a boost of confidence that I, as a seasoned lady, maybe the same age as her, cannot give her. This is fashion, and he does high editorial work. Like, look at this. Look at the stitching. Look at this. It's just a beautiful, beautiful garment. And look at how it ruffles and how it flows. What India had on was real sexy. Like, it, fit, it suits her body real good. I don't think it's really inappropriate for what she was wearing compared to the little stuff that everybody else was wearing. Because she a grown woman. So, like, either way, 
she gonna make her own decisions. Like if someone else said it was inappropriate, what they gotta do with them? Cause she a grown woman. She can wear. She's entitled to wear what she's wanting to wear. I look up to India. I think she's a very versatile, strong model in the industry, and she's she's very like open, and personable. She don't have to get all in your face, but she's down to earth from the interactions that we've had. So to me, I would look at her like somebody to look at that's been in the industry, you know, both locally and that. She had already got Dax to, you know, she was already saying hey to a couple of designers when she got up to Philly. So, you know, she's no. Um, for her wearing that outfit, I think she understands what a model is. You are there to sell clothes, sell an item, you know, promote. Basically, this is marketing and branding at its finest within people. So, her knowing that is she's going to sell... I like the color, the blue blazer, you know what I'm saying, with the ha-ha's out. I mean, I wish I could do that because if I put my ha-ha's out, they're going to be ha-hoos. But, you know, she can put it up. But, you know, it's just hectic. It's a little unorganized. You know, they have young kids, you know, parents. Parents is violent. Some lady tried to run up to me, like, cover my titties up. And I'm like, bitch, I'm dead. Like, <laughs> like I'm grown. Like, they're just boobs. No, your boundaries, point blank period. You could be a 50 year old model, but there's something, things that you don't want to do. You don't got to do it. And he has some really wonderful, but you know, they're, they're little edgy designs. And a 16 or 17 year old might not be able to pull it off, you know? And some of these parents, they're getting really upset. And it's like, what do you, how far do you want your child's career to go? So, I mean, it's not about showing your body though, it's just being professional. But at the same time, 17, 16 girls shouldn't only be wearing this for Just saying. It's fashion. It is what it is. I just watched a whole woman break down in the background, like, <laughs> in the back room, like, she can't do this no more with Sabrina. And it's just too much, you know? You gotta kinda come in being a model, knowing what you can and cannot do, and then being able to relate to people, hey, even if you're grown, I don't really like to show my breasts. And you never know why. Somebody could have had a mastectomy. That's why they don't want to show their chest there yet. That is okay. What you had said? I mean, I want. I don't have a problem with that. Yet. Is that what you said? I don't have a problem. I'm here. It's on the designers. <laughs> they ain't wear it. He just missed his opportunity. That's all. These models look like they was a size negative two, nothing for nothing, and a size four. I don't. I don't even know what a four looked like. I don't think that they were fours. I think they were just tall, slender models. He knows what he wants to look at. He walked around that thing like, I have shown up. Like, y'all ever seen that movie where he was like, Jorge has arrived? Like, that type of energy. But for people who usually act like that, they've done the work. And, his, and it was reflective in his designs. He had done the work. So would I be mad or even go waste his time to go ask, hey, can I walk for you? What are you going to do, put two dresses together to get the front? No. But I like this word cue. Whenever you're ready for thick girls, holla at me. So after we actually finished the show or whatever, we was going back upstairs to where all our clothes and stuff that we bought was at. Are you ready to move? Misha, you done? Yes. Because you're living in that phone right now. You got that pair of shoes huh? for the interview, but I wanted to collect our stuff in. Or make it look organized. It's just stuff everywhere. Mishi, your clothes don't fit in your bag. I mean, your oh shoes don't fit in your bag. No, they went in the other bag. I have in the car. If I had, I had to wait for the show. We grabbing all our stuff. Patience go say something like. So I have a checklist that of everything that I wanted to tell you guys and ask you and write off, but. I left it in the car. So well, I had a checklist of everything I wanted to talk to y'all about. I just left it in the car. I looked at her like, are you fucking kidding me? This is a this is some more extra ass shit right now. I was like, I just want to go home at this point. This shit is not organized. I am ready to go. Get me the fuck home. So I would say 
maybe later on in the future if I absolutely feel like it's necessary I would just drive myself or just take myself where I need to go because well also in a situation where I don't have to rush back home or want to be in another place after I finish doing something just given to the fact that even though the boys walk first I rode up there with some females and I rode up there like everybody like we all came as a group so like even though I'm finished walking I don't got to do nothing else pass out some cars you know whatever like that talk to a few people I'm good to go but because I came with them and I'm in a group I gotta stay as a group I gotta be collective and you know stick around to do you no know, proper everybody else, you know, and shit like that, but I was still ready to go. Can I get it from my downstairs, please? Come on, Pooh. Come on. We ain't patient. We miss Polar now. We miss Polar. Downstairs, Max, downstairs. I don't care who is at the top. I don't care who is older. I don't care who is supposed to be in charge. If I'm ready to do something else and everybody's not following along, I'm going to let everybody let it be known. So I had to gather everybody to come on so we can go downstairs so we can leave. I think the building was ready to close or some shit. So I'm like, what the fuck are we still here for? Okay. Um, India. Come on, get it together. India. India. I think I said it with a real nice, funny tone and that kind of like got everybody up to go ahead and head out the door, but I was dead ass. I'm like, y'all need a motherfucking car. I don't care if I ain't drive shit up here. Somebody gonna get in a motherfucking car and they gonna take me the fuck home. Somebody should have told me what I really should have been wearing. Cause I ain't first of all I ain't never been to Philly before. I went up there with a little fleece, little thin ass jacket, little red thin ass jacket. No coat, no nothing. I was freezing. Everywhere I went, I was cold. <laughs> Show is supposed to begin at 11 o'clock. So our call time is probably like 7 something crazy, I know. Um, but that's the way things go. After that, we are starving. I don't know if Walmart up here like that. Yeah. But they're just 
<laughs> they not lit like how it is. Yeah, Walmart on right. every corner. Yeah. Where yeah. is South Philly? Like, well, when you said we in West Philly, yeah. They said because we came out here and we did an awesome ass job that they want to go celebrate and go get something to eat. Yeah, no, we have I'm saying we don't want it's to. fucking cold and I'm not trying to keep doing this shit outside. I ain't trying to do nothing. I'm not trying to do nothing outside because why? I don't have nothing but a little ass jacket on and the wind is blowing and it's fucking cold. There's one 2.4 miles away. There's one 2.4 miles away. What? Walmart, Walmart Supermarket. Oh, Supermarket. Oh, Where are we going to Walmart? Here, you just need to get some. I just want to know what we going to eat from Walmart. <laughs> Where is Walmart? She like, all right, we need to go get some gas. Like we ain't had to fill up since we've been up there. So I'm like, shoot, what kind of gas you need? We got to walk all the way to the car. She was like, we parked all the way in fucking Mexico and we in Philly. I was like, no bullshit. Like. All right, so where's y'all's car? We're this way. In Mexico. We're, we're this way. <laughs> and then they were like, we're going to meet up at a restaurant to celebrate a good show well done in Philly, whatever like that. We done made our stamp in Philly, so we're going to celebrate. So as a family, we try to regroup eat a little bit, do something together, even if we eat separately in different cities or whatever. Make sure everybody gets fed, get on the road. Make sure we're energized for that ride. Are we eating some together? Nice. Okay. Like so we should just put everybody... Text me when you get to your car. All right, and I'll take your phone dance, so... Okay. Do what I spoke. My phone will never go dead. It stays on charge. <laughs>